We use symbols to represent numbers all the time, like this simple vertical line is the number 1. Sometimes we add dashes to make it a tad more distinct. This butt cheek looking squiggle is the number 3, and this upside down L looking guy is none other than the number 7. Yet the thing is there are actually numbers out there bigger than 1, 3, and even 7. Scary idea I know. Thankfully all numbers to ever exist can be presented with 10 little symbols. The thing is, these symbols can only really be used for fixed defined numbers, even the bigger ones. Yet numbers can get pretty big. In fact, they are technically never ending. If something is to go on forever with no end in sight, we refer to that as being infinite, known in its noun form as infinity. Infinite comes from Latin roots and is a combination of their inner prefix, meaning not slash opposite, like we see in words such as invalid, and their word of finite us meaning end, which yeah is also where we get the word finish from too. This means that infinite really means no end, which is fitting as infinity is all about something not having an end right. While infinity is often linked with the other numbers, it really isn't a number unto itself. Instead, it is more a concept or an idea, like you can't roll an infinity on a d20 or anything like that. What infinity does have in common with numbers however is the fact that it's commonly represented with a symbol. You are probably more than familiar with the infinity symbol, and that's because because it crops up all over the place and unlike the symbols for numbers, it's kind of taken on a life of its own. The concept of infinity is a really big thing, like try to imagine something being infinite, whether that be the span of a human life or even an infinite amount of rubber ducks, it's mind boggling. This has led to infinity becoming this deeply profound concept and its symbol being the go to for reflecting never ending foreverness. The concept of infinity not only appears in mathematics but also physics and spiritualism too, it's why you are just as like likely to see an infinity symbol pop on a tarot card or a tattoo, as you are likely to see on a maths or science paper. All these instances of infinity meanwhile use that symbol, and it's a symbol which does have its ultimate origins in maths. Like other symbols we see in written language, it has a more unique proper name too. In the same way the and symbol is really called an ampersand, or the hash symbol has all kinds of names, the infinity symbol is more correctly called a lemniscate. The name is lifted from another symbol of the same name and same design, but doesn't have the same meaning. The original lemniscate was just a looping pattern and was studied in ancient geometry. We can find it in Viking artifacts and it looks similar to the Celtic knot. In this form, the lemniscate doesn't represent infinity however, it's just a pretty pattern. The word of lemniscate simply comes from the Greek lemniskos, which simply means ribbon, fitting as it does look like one. The symbol also has a nickname of a sideways 8 or horizontal 8 or even the terrific lazy 8, as it looks like an 8 having a little snooze or something. The lemniscate is a pretty old symbol and we don't know its true origins. It was probably just a nice thing to draw and pleasing on the eye to people in the past, in the same way we have the cool S today or something. Using this symbol or something that looks like it to represent the idea of infinity is relatively newer in its creation. The earliest evidence we have of the infinity symbol being used to represent infinity comes to us in the 17th century, with a single person who we can place as its creator. The honour goes to one John Wallace. Wallace was an English mathematician as well as clergyman. He was a contemporary of Isaac Newton and made some huge headway in the realm of maths, despite not being a household name like Newton is today. As well as being the creator of the infinity symbol, he is also seen as the developer of calculus. So yeah, for anyone like myself who hated calculus at school, or even are still at school and hate it, you have this guy to thank. He also did way more than just maths however. He wrote on theology, philosophy and even linguistics too. Wallace was even instrumental in forming one of the earliest systems for teaching the deaf to speak. I guess all of that makes up for bestowing calculus on the planet. It's amazing how many fields he was proficient in. I swear in the past people could just be an expert on anything they wanted to, but also I guess way back then there wasn't as much info out there, so it was much easier to know everything on a specific subject, but anyway, that's a huge tangent. His contribution we are most interested in first appeared in his 1655 paper dubbed Arithmetica Infatorium, which translates into meaning the arithmetic of infinitesimals. It makes all the sense in the world what would first appear in this paper all about infinitesimals. We see it appear at pretty much the start of it and its use throughout. From this single paper, the symbol spread to become the go-to when talking about infinity in the world of maths and then infinities in the wider world too. While we know this is where it came from, what we have less of an idea about is its true origin. Yeah, despite how much he wrote, Wallace never actually explained why he chose this symbol to represent infinity. The dude really did just appear, dropped a bang of a symbol of no context and died. Actually, he didn't just die, he lived until 1703. He was alive for like another 50 years after creating this symbol and 
no one ever thought to ask him why he used it or he never explained it. You know, I take back what I said about people in the past being amazing at everything. They were really dumb. But without a clear answer from the creator of the symbol, it has led to people to speculate on the origins of the infinity sign. Most theories on its origins have it coming from a different way of representing numbers. This brings us to the Romans. For all the good the Romans did and how forward thinking they were, their number game wasn't too solid. Instead of creating unique symbols to represent numbers, they used the same symbols they used for words. Now despite how odd that might seem, Roman numerals still find use today when we want to be a tad more ornate with our representation of numbers. It's widely thought that the infinity symbol may have come to us via Roman numerals. Which Roman numeral exactly however is way more debated. There are two leading contenders, one being the Roman numeral for 100 million. That's a one followed by eight zeros in how we represent numbers today. Traditionally in Roman numerals, 100 million is represented with a C with two lines above it. Yet we have evidence of the symbol we now call the infinity symbol being placed within a box being used to represent 100 million. This evidence dates back to 36 AD and shows us just how old this symbol is regardless of its meaning. It makes sense why Wallace would adopt a Roman symbol for 100 million to mean infinity. 100 million is a pretty big number, not quite infinity but still pretty big. The only issue here is once again we run into a dead end, as we have no idea why the Romans used this symbol in the first place to represent 100 million. The second Roman numeral theory relates to a much smaller number. 1000 isn't an as big number as 100 million, but I get the idea, it's still sizable. Normally, 1000 is represented with just the letter M in Roman numerals. Some believe this is where the infinity symbol comes from, and I can kind of see it, I suppose. There is some logic in an M becoming this symbol, but this, however, wasn't the only way in which 1000 was represented in Rome. When it came to writing larger numbers, a different system was used, sometimes called apostrophus. This involves using the letter I, as well as the letter C, and an inverted form of it, to represent larger numbers. I mean, there's a lot more minute to it, but all we really need to know for this video is that 1000, when written in apostrophus, like a C, followed by an I, followed by a backward C. This already looks an awful lot like the infinity symbol we all know and love today, so it's easy to see how it could be adapted slightly. The I could be moved to connect the Cs together, and before you know it, the infinity symbol is formed. These are just ideas it's worth remembering. We ultimately don't know why Wallace used this symbol. A non roman numeral theory places the lowercase Greek omega symbol as the precursor to the infinity symbol. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet, so it makes sense why it be used as one to represent infinity. But maybe Rollis just saw the Lemniscus one day while researching another area and thought it looked cool, so he used it as the infinity symbol, as it had no other real use in mass at the time. I mean, none of these Roman numeral theories actually explain how fitting this symbol is to meaning infinity. The symbol loops around on itself in a pleasing, never-ending fashion. Like, it's the perfect way to present the idea of something being never-ending. I honestly would have presumed the symbol had ties to the Mobius strip. These are things that can appear in the real world or in art and a single sided surfaces like a ribbon that twists and loops onto itself. They can be pretty trippy and in many cases look similar to infinity symbols. While they've been around in some form for centuries, the wider concept of them and their naming only dates to the 19th century. So in some weird way, the infinity symbol is actually older than the Mobius strip. But there's even the Ouroboros. This is ancient in its origins too. This is another a symbol that represents infinity and as a snake or dragon devouring its own tail that represents an endless cycle. In most cases Ouroboros are circular but we've seen them looking like infinity symbols too. These are different ways across time we've come to represent the idea of infinity but seemingly neither of them influenced the creation of the symbol now most linked with our idea of infinity. But what's interesting is that despite how popular this symbol is, very little in our world is actually infinite. While numbers might go on and on forever, most other things will come to an eventual end. Us, the planet, the entire universe, and even this video. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. 
Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All of that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.